Welcome back to the David and Diplomat YouTube channel. You got your boys here, Lady and Berg, the Dividend Diplomat. We've been talking to you a lot lately about what stocks are undervalued, what stocks may not be undervalued, some ETFs, some alternatives to SCHD and VYM. Today, though, we're going to take a step back, change it up a little bit, have some fun. We're going to discuss two of the major stories that impacted the stock market during, during this week. Two headliners, guys, but two things you guys have to do. Smash that subscribe button. Give Bert and Lanny a nice thumbs up, guys. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers. The road to WrestleMania for us here. But as Bert said, two big highlights, big things hitting the news. Um, one, obviously, is via the stock market. The other one is, is it a sign for the macro economy as a whole? Is this the direction that consumers are heading and is it a sign for what's to come so that's what our headliners are going to be focused on today yeah so for the first story here today we're recording this thursday night march 23rd we're going to kick this one right off with what happened in the stock market today because the dow had one of its worst days since early 2023 it was down over 600 points to end the day here down 1.5 percent the s p 500 wasn't down nearly as much it was only down 0.74 percent or down 39 points so not bad not bad but man we were just talking about this before we film lanny something is something is amiss right now and i think mr market caught up uh, started to catch some wind of it too and caught up and that spooked investors a little bit yeah i mean and you know the fed really came in with some minutes saying that you know the inflation progress is not quite where they want it to be um, you know, economic data keeps proving otherwise, even though, as we get into the second story later on, is it, I mean, mm -hmm. we're not sure what to make of the data. And I feel like that's also the Fed's take is it's still too murky, too gray to have any sort of solid footing. So that spooked the markets. Mm -hmm. And then even the initial, you know, job list claims for the week that ended last week. Um, came in lower than expected. Again, the Fed wants to see that at or higher than what they're expecting um, because that'll be a sign that, okay, <laughs> the rate pain is you know taking its effect. Mm -hmm. um, so that didn't help matters for, for the Dow at least. No, and that's really what this is all about at the end of the day. Before the Fed can start cutting rates, they need to see that the economy is slowing down. They need to see those consumers stop spending. They need to see companies stop hiring at a, at a rate. And that's what just isn't happening. So every report that comes out, every quarter where you still see these strong earnings, well, it's great to see companies performing so well. It just kicks that rate cut further and further down the, down the road. So we may or may not even see one in 2024, which obviously isn't built into market expectations. Analysts were obviously expecting some form of a rate cut in 2024. Yeah, right now, we were just talking that there's only really a 50% chance mm -hmm. that come September, we might see the first rate cut. And then even in November, they're still marking a good chunk of the percentage that rates will be right where they're at right now. I think it's little north of 30% um, at the FOMC CME website. So there's still a likelihood that in, you know, call it four months, five, six months from now, we might be right at the same place that we're at right now. It's fascinating. And that's obviously like the market's been on a tear. So we're not going to pretend like this is doom and gloom. The S&P 500's toast right now or the Dow's toast. It right. just gave back a little bit of the massive gains they've had so far in 2024. But could this be a sign of more to come? And could this be a sign for a tougher second half of the year for the stock market and for the economy as inflation really starts to shake and everyone starts to figure out what the rest of the year is going to look like? Yeah. So, so that's story number one. Do you guys think that we're in for a big break in the economy coming up over the next 90 to 180 days let us know what you guys think in the comments but story two man we've been you know featuring and talking about this now for a couple of days and more and more keep wanting to join mm -hmm. the club here um can we call it the value or low price club i think we call it the get things back in line to where they used to be a couple of years ago club because 
the fast food wars, Lanny, are on fire. And it's been really fun to watch because the stories over the last month or so, you've seen them. You've all seen like the Instagram stories or the Facebook stories or all, all the TikTok stories of um, just those insane McDonald's bills where you get your Big Mac and your fries and it's $18 or something outrageous, just showing how expensive fast food has become and how they haven't been able to fight off inflation. Well, Lanny, have they finally broken? Have they have they finally broken from the fast food point in other markets as well? What are you seeing, at least on the food front? Well, on the food front, we'll talk about the fast food front. Is that where you want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So McDonald's, we all are aware about their $5 value meal that's coming back for about a month, according to all the press releases that I'm seeing. A big month for consumers to spend 5 bucks, which is obviously upsetting the franchisees because mm -hmm. it's going to be put a pressure on their margins and they're asking McDonald's corporate to step in to help them. And I don't think that will even happen. <laughs> so then Wendy's said, okay, fine. Here's our $3 breakfast meal, um, which is, I think the egg and sausage, uh, you know, muffin sandwich with some seasoned fries might have to try it out. Not going to lie. Yeah. That's um, not a bad deal for $3. Yeah. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> and then a fifteen dollar fifty piece nugget, a fifty piece there, guys. And then the king, the king of the burger themselves, Burger King, also said, "All right, McDonald's, tip your cap. We're going to tip our crown and then enter in uh, with our own five dollar meal." So that is QSR Restaurant Brands International. Yeah, so that's one area, and that's obviously what's been highlighted as the most outrageous, as you're seeing in the fast food. But it's also elsewhere where this has been going on, too, between just general grocery shopping, the quiet inflation that's just snuck up there, those prices that $2 things were are now $3.50. All those things add up. And it finally, I think, broke Target into Target where they reported a decrease in sales. They, they reported their earnings. Their price got – stock price just got decimated uh, this week because – the consumer's finally starting to fight back. The consumer's not spending the way they used to, and Target's starting to see it. So they're slashing prices. Even Walmart seeing that they need to get more value into some of their prices too. So everybody's finally realizing consumers aren't spending quite as much, so we have to pull back some of these major price increases, even if it affects the company's bottom line. Yeah, so overall, I think... You might see some general products start dropping in price. Um, we're seeing it in the fast food. We're seeing it in the grocery store. Question is, is what could be the next thing to drop? Is it going to be consumer goods like TVs, technology, laptops? Are we getting back into that? Could it be clothing retailers? Mm -hmm. And God, for the love of God, will it be real estate prices, guys? So there's there's a lot of things going on right now, and it's not here to punish the consumer. It's, it's companies now realizing the shape that consumers are in and also the shape that they're in with declining sales because consumers somehow, thankfully, have a brain. They're like, you know what? I can't spend money at Chipotle anymore or Starbucks anymore or, you know, let me see a way to curb my spending. Um, yeah. So now, the, now these you know, brick and mortars have to figure it out. Yeah. And that's what's going to be interesting to watch, especially as that interacts with point number one about how rates are going to come down. Is this going to finally be one of the things that starts tipping the scales and starts slowing down the economy? That's what's going to be interesting to see. So everyone, those were our two big stories that we had here today. So Let us know what your thoughts are about them. We'd love to hear what you, what, how you're thinking. When do you think rates are going to cut? And what do you think about these companies that are finally slashing their prices? Are you on board with it? Are you excited about it? What sector do you think is going to be next in the big price cut area? Let us know below, guys. Keep saving. Keep investing. Build that passive income stream, guys, because that's what we do here on this channel. If you haven't, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and Bert, hit him with a sweet chin music. You're either with us or you're against us, Jack. That was Bert, the Hurt, and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.